Hello and welcome to another edition of Ontology Talk. I'm Adam Pease and I'm going to be speaking today about knowledge graphs and knowledge representation. Let's take a look at a simple example of something we might want to represent in a graph. And I'll try to do it on two different ways and uh, tell you what the issue is with this first simple representation. So let, let's get started. First, we have uh, the notion of being between two things. So I've got some cartoons here to show it visually. I'm also going to provide the example as a sort of an English sentence, and then also lastly, a graph representation. So here we have elephant uh, one is between ostrich one and ostrich two. And a simple representation we might come up with is just having a betweenness uh, relationship, the relationship of being between uh, two things. So we have elephant one, it's between ostrich one and ostrich two. Okay, great so far. Let's take a look at a second example, uh, very similar. So now we've got this same elephant one. Now it's between elephant two and ostrich two. Here again, a simple uh, visual presentation of uh, what a graph representation of that might look like. Now let's take both examples together and see what happens. So we've brought back ostrich one. So elephant one is still between ostrich one and ostrich two, just as we had before. Um, and we've still got elephant one between elephant two and ostrich two. But in this combined representation, uh, now our s very simple approach to representing betweenness in a graph seems to have some problems. Let me tell you about those. So we've still got these two things that are uh, true, just as we saw before. There's elephant one between elephant two and ostrich two. Elephant one is between ostrich one and ostrich two. But the problem is that in our graph, if we don't know what the original situation is, we're just doing something computational on this representation, we've got uh, another way to look at this same graph, which gives us the conclusion that elephant one is between elephant two and ostrich one. And you can see that isn't the case. Ostrich one is over here on the left, as is elephant two. Uh, this is not an accurate conclusion with respect to uh, the real world. So we've done something wrong in our representation. And uh, the problem is that we've tried to take a representation, uh, a relationship amongst three things. That's what between is. You have to be between, uh, have a, one entity is between two others. So that's a total of three things and you're, you're stuck, right? Um, but in a graph, all you have is the relationship, uh, one relationship between two things. But there is a solution for this. So let's look into what that solution is that would prevent us from coming up with this wrong conclusion uh, in the original representation. So the approach has kind of a technical name. It's called reification. So it refers to naming of something. We're in this case going to name the instance, the situation of the relationship between among these three things. So just as before, we have uh, elephant one is between ostrich one and ostrich two. But instead of representing each of those relationships uh, individually, uh, we're going to start off by saying that we have an instance of this uh, relationship. And let's call it betweenness one. We're going to name this situation. And likewise, uh, for our second example, we're going to say betweenness two is the name we give to this relationship of elephant one between being between elephant two and ostrich two. Now, great, now we once we've done this, we uh, have these named instances of the relationship, um, but we also need to create the components of the relationship, and I'm calling these center and end. So for our first between this one, it's a relationship in which elephant one is at the center, and ostrich one and ostrich two are at the ends or the sides. And similarly for between this two, elephant one is at the center again, and ostrich two and elephant uh, two are at the sides. There's elephant two and ostrich two. And I'm representing this visually, as you can see, uh, by grouping these in boxes or sort of uh, funny shaped boxes. And uh, between this one is denoted by the solid black box, and between this two is denoted by the red dashed box. So now we can have these two things, these two examples coexisting and not causing some unintended conclusion in this more sophisticated representation. So let's take a look at how to explore this computationally 
you don't have to just take my word for it and uh, um, you know reason from just the pictures I've shown. We can actually uh, compute this stuff. And so I've opened up my ontology editor um, and we'll be able to do some work with a theorem prover. Um, just quick introduction here, just very simple language. So uh, we have uh, s statements that are bounded by parentheses and the relation uh, name is the first argument. So I start off with just defining uh, the concepts that we care about here. Uh, ostrich one and two, elephant one and two, we declared them to be of type animal. So I already have some basic definitions of uh, things like animals and objects loaded in the system. Um, then I define a uh, relationship uh, called between. It's a relationship that's binary. It's between two objects. And then we can start off um, by saying uh, the, the things that we have stated previously about the world, uh, so that uh, elephant one is between ostrich one and ostrich two. So there it is, elephant one, ostrich one, ostrich two. And that uh, elephant one is between elephant two and ostrich two, elephant two and ostrich two. Uh, and so we're going to ask then whether we have this uh, unanticipated result, the result that we, a result that we don't want, of is elephant one between elephant two and ostrich one. Elephant two and ostrich one, there they are, and you can see elephant one obviously is not between, but that wound up being an artifact of that uh, previous kind of naive representation that we did. So let's just find out then if we can uh, prove this in a formal theorem prover. So we're not just looking at a diagram, but we're really seeing a computational result. So let's just ask this query, query on the highlighted expression. Um, and there it is, we have this uh, result, uh, which is what we expected, but of course it's not what we want, because it's not really the represent, uh, representation isn't actually saying what we want. So here we have again um, that uh, we've got this information about elephant one is between elephant two and ostrich one, and, and that doesn't conform with reality. All right? So let's go back to this file of definitions. And now let's take a look at how can we uh, define these things in the, the new way that we came up with uh, that uses reification. So we're gonna go back uh, in the slides so you can see here. Now we've got these two instances of between this one, between this two. So we define them as entities. We create these new relationships that are binary. We call them end and center, and they're both relationships between entities and objects. In this case, the entities are this instance of a betweenness, and the objects are animals, uh, the animals that are the ostrich and the elephant. Um, as I say, uh, and elsewhere, we have some information that defines that uh, animals are objects. And so then we state uh, the facts about our current situation um, that uh, ostrich, uh, rather the between this one, has an ostrich on each side and an elephant in the center. So just as a reminder, uh, elephant in the center, ostrich on each side. Yep, that's true. And then we have a second between this two that has elephant one in the center and has elephant two and ostrich two on the sides. So here's uh, elephant two and ostrich two on the sides uh, around elephant one, which is in the center. And so we're gonna try to prove the same thing in this different representation. Do we have this unanticipated conclusion that uh, elephant one is in the center and ostrich one and elephant two are the surrounding uh, things, uh, elf, ostrich one and elephant two, and, and they're not, right? So that's the unanticipated conclusion. So unfortunately here, the, uh, the end result of the computational process is going to be uh, that we just get no answer. The system's gonna time out. I'll show you that just to prove it to you, but um, the answer isn't gonna be very exciting. We're not able to prove this undesirable, unanticipated conclusion. That is the, the result that we want. We want uh, th that we can't prove something that's not true. Uh, so if we can not prove uh, this thing that is contrary to the real world situation, we've succeeded in our representation. Our representation models the real world accurately. And there we go, uh, null result. The system has just timed out. It's failed to prove uh, this thing that, that uh, we know isn't true about our uh, real-world uh, situation that we've modeled, and so we've succeeded. 
Um, so that's it. I just wanted to show you how there are these two different ways uh, that one might go about representing a very simple uh, relationship amongst three things, the relationship of physical betweenness, and how with a, what might be your first cut or a naive try at doing this, you get unanticipated incorrect results. And by employing this technique known as reification, uh, you can solve it and come up with the result that you anticipated. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Ontology Talk. If you found this interesting, I hope you'll like this video and uh, also consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your colleagues and friends. You also may want to go to ontologyportal.org where there's a lot more information and you can also order a copy of my book. Uh, and stay tuned because uh, I hope to have a few more videos on uh, this topic of how to represent knowledge within knowledge crafts.